All right, we're going to go through some terminology. I know you think you know these words, but I want you to listen for maybe a little deeper meaning, maybe a little more nuanced meaning than the way you learned them the first time. Um, but these are the words that I want to go over with you right now. First is genotype and phenotype. Genotype is pretty straightforward. It's just the, the, make, the allelic makeup of an individual. Humans have at least 20,000 genes, so you have at least, you have two alleles for each gene, so you have 40,000 alleles. I mean, technically your genotype is the sum total of all of those alleles. Usually though, we only talk about one gene at a time, so your genotype is typically indicated in words or in letters and to indicate what two alleles you have for some specific gene. A phenotype is a little more nuanced. Phenotype is the any observable expression. It doesn't have to be expression of genes. It can be any observable trait. So certainly your genes have a, a role in phenotype, but also there's an environmental influence. Um, for example, uh, behavior is considered a phenotype, and it certainly has some genetic parts that, that contribute to behavior, but also some experiences and ways that you, um, things you've experienced or environment or drugs. Um, hallucinogenic drugs can change your behavior and that's not genetic. So a phenotype is any kind of observable trait, certainly has um, a, some amount of genetic component. Some phenotypes are there are some that are completely genetically controlled, but most things have a genetic input and an environmental input. There are also phenotypes that are completely environmental um, in a sense. So don't get too hung up on phenotype only being the result of genotype. We're going to um, look at a lot of variations of that. Um, all right, gene. A gene is a section of DNA on a chromosome that is copied into RNA. That's the simplest way to describe a gene. Sometimes we call it a transcription unit. Not all RNAs are translated to protein. So that's a nuance that we're going to explore in this course. So a gene is a section of, of DNA that's copied into RNA. And it may or may not have um, an influence on phenotype. So some genes um, can, can potentially not be ever expressed. So there's genes exist even if they're not expressed. Allele, allele is a version of a gene. So when we talk about alleles, we get more specific, like you know, the gene for eye color, that's a general trait, and then the allele could be blue, the blue allele, the brown allele, the green allele, and actually eye color is more than one gene in the end. But you, you know, the allele is where you specify the actual um, kind of the outcome, kind of the phenotype that results from that allele. All right, homozygous and heterozygous. Homozygous is just a way of describing genotype. Homozygous means two of the same allele, whatever that is. So you could be homozygous for the blue allele for eye color. You could be homozygous for the brown allele for eye color. That's describing, it's a way of describing a genotype. Um, heterozygous means your genetic makeup is one copy of two different alleles. So it could be one copy of a blue allele and one copy of a brown allele in one individual. Heterozygous is just two different alleles for that gene in that individual. Again, it's a way of describing genotype. Now, does genotype always dictate phenotype? No, but we're going to start off in Mendelian genetics, pretending like it does, and then we'll start to explore all the possibilities where genotype does not accurately um, dictate or predict phenotype. So just be, be expecting that when that happens. That won't happen until about chapter four in the lecture. And then dominant and recessive. This is a big one. If you have if you have a genotype that's homozygous like two blue alleles, 
then the concept of dominant and recessive doesn't really make sense because dominant and recessive, those words refer to, I'll also say dominant and recessive, maybe I'll put it down here. These terms refer to the interaction or the outcome of the interaction between two different alleles. In other words, if you have a heterozygous individual there, one brown allele, one blue allele for eye color, then whatever the phenotype that results from that interaction of two different alleles, we call that allele, we call that the dominant. So when you have two of the same allele, dominant doesn't really make any sense because they're the same. There's not a, there's not a, an interaction really. If you have two blue alleles, you're gonna have blue eyes. If you have two brown alleles, you're gonna have brown eyes. Homozygous, but when you're heterozygous, the interaction between the two alleles, however that turns out, is the dominant. So, and recessive is the one that doesn't seem to show itself in a sense. So we only use the terms dominant and recessive, well, we should properly use the terms dominant and recessive when we're thinking about heterozygous genotypes. And then what kind of phenotype does that result in? Now, sometimes we do say the word homozygous dominant, and that's because we're just trying to be general. We're saying, okay, homozygous brown, homozygous blue. We, we say do homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, but we probably should say homozygous for the blue allele, homozygous for the brown allele. And even I get lazy with that. But really, dominant and recessive is the outcome of an interaction of two alleles. And it is not dominant and recessive. This is important. These are not inherent to the alleles. Inherent. Did I spell that right? In other words, just because brown is dominant to blue in eye color doesn't mean brown is dominant to everything in eye color. Brown could be recessive to a different allele for eye color. In other words, it's only the outcome of that particular interaction where the allele is dominant. I'll give you an example, mice. In mice, there are at least four different fur color alleles for this one gene. Now, each mouse can only have one, uh, excuse me, two of those alleles. So I'm gonna say yellow. If you're homozygous for yellow, so I'll say yellow over yellow, that's homozygous for yellow, then the mouse is gonna be yellow. If you are homozygous for brown over brown, oops, where'd, that, where'd I go? If you're homozygous for brown, which we call a goody, then I'll say brown, then you're gonna be brown. And if you're homozygous for black allele, you're going to be black. If you're homozygous for the white allele, you're going to be white. But what if, what if you have a brown allele and a black allele, so heterozygous, brown, black, in one mouse? What color is the mouse? I know you're going to assume that the darker allele is always dominant. That sometimes is true, but sometimes is not. You actually have to cross a homozygous brown mouse with a homozygous black mouse, cross them and see what the hybrids look like. And in this case, it does turn out to be a black mouse. But when you cross a homozygous yellow mouse with a homozygous black mouse, you do not get a black mouse, you get a yellow mouse. And so that heterozygous yellow-black comes out yellow. So yellow is dominant over black, and black is recessive to yellow in that case, in that interaction. Brown is dominant, or excuse me, brown is recessive to black in that interaction, and black is dominant to brown in that interaction. So black, it's, it kind of comes out to be a pecking order. I'm running out of space, but... Um, yellow is dominant, I'm going to use the greater than sign, to black. So when yellow and black are together, yellow is dominant, but black is dominant to brown. So when black and brown are together, black is the dominant. And so what I'm trying to say is dominant is not an, inher an inherent feature of the allele itself. Black, you can't just say black is dominant, period. It's only black is dominant when it is put with brown. It's only in that situation, or black is recessive when it's put with yellow. 
So these are these are a little bit of a nuanced thing that you probably didn't in, uh, encounter in your freshman class. Another thing that's a misconception is that dominant alleles are always the most common in the population. That's not true. Agouti by far, the brown color of mice is by far the most common in most mouse populations. So dominant alleles may or may not be the most common in the population. Having an extra finger, six fingers, that is a genetic trait that is dominant. It's called polydactyly. Certainly it's not the most common. We mostly are homozygous recessive for the five finger allele. So don't make assumptions about things. Um, try to be careful uh, about making certain assumptions. All right. Okay, but that gets through uh, some of the main terminology. And I think the fun part about genetics is, is really when we start to delve into when genotype does not absolutely dictate phenotype. I think that's where things really get interesting, which is quite a bit beyond what Mendel was able to, to figure out. So Mendel never saw that, but we will, because as we explore more and more um, traits, it's not as simple as what Mendel did. Mendel is just the very simple beginning. It's not the end of genetics by far. All right, so that's an overview of your terminology.